Dealing with a failure due to self-sabotage you can set yourself up for a failure due to low self-esteem. It can result in self-sabotaging behaviors, such as not trying hard enough, after all, you don't believe you'll succeed, so hates the point of doing your best, comma exhibiting doubt, who's going to date you, invest in your business, or hire you, if you send unconscious signals of uncertainty, comma giving up at the first sign of trouble, why fight, if you already decided thought you'd most likely fail, comma creating situations or excuses that set a person up for a failure, like, a student who parties the night before an important exam, dot it's common for a person suffering from a lack of confidence to invent insignificant problems so they can have an excuse not to face the big ones dot for example, they'll tell themselves they desperately need a new dress for a job interview and spend 4 hours shopping instead of preparing themselves for the interview. Or they'll come up with a supposedly important reason to stay up late, so when they don't get the job they'll be able to protect their ego and say that they failed because they had to stay up late. As absurd as it sounds, it isn't a rare behavior. Unfortunately, because it's so subtle, people usually don't notice they're doing it subconsciously it's not like they consciously want to fail a job interview, but that's the outcome that their unconscious behavior protocols to overcome this type of failure, you need to take three steps 1. Believe in your goal a lack of confidence leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy, you don't believe you can achieve something, and that's exactly what happens. One of the most effective ways to overcome this problem is to not develop a belief in yourself but in your goal. When you're working on an extremely important goal increased self-confidence will be a side effect of your efforts. I spent several years trying to build a successful business. If it weren't for McClear, deep conviction that I would literally die if I were to work for the man, he wouldn't he have stuck with the process for so long. I felt so strongly about the significance of this goal in my life that, even after numerous failures, getting into debt and being just an inch from having to close up shop, I didn't lose my confidence. This is what believing in the importance of your goal can do for you. Can you imagine willingly suffering so much for a goal you sort of want? Toriak, empowering story number 4, Phil Knight Nike founder Phil Knight wrote the following words in his memoir, Shoe Dog, a memoir by the creator of Nike, driving back to Portland, I'd puzzle over my sudden success at selling. I'd been unable to sell encyclopedias, and I'd ishpissed it to boot. I'd been slightly better at selling mutual funds, but I'd felt dead inside. So why was selling shoes so different? Because, I realized, it wasn't selling. I believed in running. I believed that if people got out and ran a few miles every day, the world would be a better place, and I believed these shoes were better to run in. People, sensing my belief, wanted some of that belief for themselves. Belief, I decided. Belief is irresistible. 23 from then on, his life didn't magically change. While he did finally begin his work on what was to become Nike, he still went through numerous failures setbacks and had to deal with larger than life problems. However, if it wasn't he for his irresistible belief, who knows if Phil would have built one of the world's largest and most recognized sports companies, too. Replace self-handicapping with defensive pessimism or strategic optimism when you're afraid of failure, you might sabotage your efforts to protect your ego from the crushing consequences of failure. This behavior, exhibited by creating obstacles and excuses to justify your failures, is called self-handicapping. According to researchers Andrew J. Elliott and Marcy A. Church, self-handicapping makes it challenging to reach one's goals 24. The problem with self-handicapping is that, on the surface, you always have a perfect explanation for your actions. Even if you're hurting yourself by taking actions that undermine your efforts but protect your ego, you'll still believe a redoing the right thing. If you recognize this happening in your life, try two alternative strategies 1. Defensive pessimism Defensive pessimists set low expectations for their performance and envision possible negative outcomes. However, instead of creating circumstances that would undermine their success, they plan and prepare for the obstacles 25. This strategy focuses on managing anxiety in a constructive way. 
instead of sabotaging your efforts so that you can avoid the unpleasant failure, you plan for the anxiety and develop solutions to handle it. Let's imagine you have scheduled a job interview at your dream company. A person with a self-handicapping strategy will most likely do some of the following worry themselves sick about the interview and their performance, unconsciously create a situation that will make them arrive late and dramatically reduce their chance of getting hired, if they even get a second chance after being late, develop physical symptoms that prevent them from going to the interview so they can avoid the anxiety, along with losing the job opportunity. In contrast, a defensive pessimist will envision a bad performance and then research every single possible question they might be asked and prepare a solid answer for each one, leave to go to the interview an hour sooner, so even if there's a gigantic traffic, jam they'll still get there on time, ensure that they feel well and look good by paying close attention to healthy nutrition, exercise, and getting sufficient sleep prior to the job interview.